SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated was actually a very, very good remake of the beloved Nickelodeon classic. However, it appears to have been made quite a bit easier in many places, most notably the boss fights and the sliding levels. So because of this, I decided that it would be a good idea to try and complete Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated Edition without taking any damage. Okay, so as we clear out everything in SpongeBob's house, I will explain how I wanted this run to work. Unless you have a way to mod the game, you'll always have a minimum of 3 health. Dying just sends you back to the last checkpoint. Initially, and at other times, I tried to implement a rule where I had to fast travel to the start of the spatula that I was working on if I took damage, just to make it harder on myself. But I eventually sort of evolved this into a kill myself immediately type of rule. It was kind of a mixture of the two throughout the run. Additionally, socks are allowed, but treating with Mr. Krabs is not. By this point, you will have seen me obtain my first spatula and leave SpongeBob's house. Our second spatula will come from atop SpongeBob's house, and a third, as well as a sock, will come from Squidward's house. We will get yet another sock from Patrick, and a fourth from inside his house itself. To Jellyfish Fields we go! After grabbing another sock, we kill our first few enemies, and I will not be discussing every sock I find since there's honestly quite a few of them. We're able to dodge the pufferfish projectiles with some well-timed jumping around the ledges. We grab a spatula from the bungee jump, and thankfully, Spongy here runs faster than these robots do. We activate our first teleport box, then we take out a duplication-atron and grab a fifth spatula. The next objective was actually easier than expected. It involves hitting three buttons while dodging a bunch of robots and spawners, and I actually got through it on my first try. So now we're going to switch to Patrick for the first time. The cave section involves quite a bit of careful movement to avoid the lava balls and the spikes. I somehow actually managed to get all the way down the slide, and then we take our first L of the run against a trio of fodder bots on the small platform. I worked my way back to that point only to take a hit while trying to stun and throw a hammer. I got close on my third attempt, but was still unsuccessful. And the fourth. And the fifth. The sixth. The seventh. Before miraculously managing to pull off the throw and grab the spatula. That was tough. I decided to skip the whole Drain the Lake mission due to it being completely focused on combat and slamming robots, and that doesn't always work perfectly. Dodging the Tartars is a little bit tough since they get three shots at once. This one is more annoying than it should have been. And then Spongy gets a nice double penetration a bit further along. I think this platform has been fixed in one of the more recent patches, but back at the time I did this run, it was causing way too many issues, so I really hope it got fixed. On the bright side, one of those times where I had to kill myself here, I actually managed to break the game and run around in the out of bounds section of the game. So at least that was a bit of an adventure. I eventually managed to make the jump again. I avoided two more tar bots and then began to fight the king jellyfish. I struggled in this fight a lot more than I expected to and a lot more than I would normally. And I'd also like to know how exactly a king jellyfish, presumably a male jellyfish, births baby jellyfish, but I eventually managed to land a killing blow. I got the spatula from the slide, and then another one from Squidward. I picked up this spatula here that I somehow managed to miss before the boss fight, and then I made my first trade with Patrick. Now we are off to downtown, where we will need to collect 11 steering wheels. We end up taking damage while trying to upward hit a tiki tower, but we eventually knock out all the towers for our 12th spatula. I got hit by a G-Love, I then paid the entrance fee to the Sea Needle, and began the horribly tedious process of destroying all of the bungee tikis. The controls are not good in these bungee sections, nor is the camera angle, and if you die, or in this case take damage, you have to redo any of the three jumps you already completed. But I did eventually get through it. We then switch over to Sandy for the first time, who we use to collect some more steering wheels, socks, and our 14th spatula. We then head up to the downtown rooftops. We dodge a Chuck's annoying missile attack, and then we earn our 15th spatula from the timed swinging challenge. I managed to run around and dodge a very big group of robots here, grab some collectible items, as well as spatula number 16 just outside of the lighthouse. The lighthouse is a fairly tricky multi-floor enemy gauntlet, where a single hit means that I have to go all the way back to the start, and it really heavily comes down to memorizing the locations of the spawners. I died four or five times here, but then I eventually managed to kill the final robot, 
got the spatula here as well as the final steering wheel and another sock. By returning the steering wheels and trading with Patrick, I reached 19 total spatulas. Next up, we are off to the Poseidon for our first main boss fight. The first phase is pretty easy and it's cleared in the first try. The second phase really isn't any worse and is also cleared first try. The third phase was tougher than expected. The double clothesline move feels a lot harder to dodge in this version than it was in the original, one of the few more difficult areas. But I did eventually manage to get some consistent timing down and cleared the boss fight, earning myself the Bubble Bowl. Our next stop is Goo Lagoon, which involves some simple light switching puzzles, a Patrick platforming section for a sock, and a second Patrick platforming puzzle to become legal in terms of our number of spatulas. We rescue the five campers for spatula number 22, climb around the castle, spatula get, dodge these puffer fish things, I think that's what they are. The rest of the caves go pretty smoothly. We end up getting spatula 24 at the end of it. We then vandalize a ticket booth and the entire pier. Take an L on this sock, I decide not to go back for it. Clear out the bumper boats and reach the one third mark of completion. We grab another easy spatula from the bungee jump here on the pier. We then get another by crossing the ice under the pier. Then we destroy the robot that stole all of Karen's sunscreen for spatula number 28. And then number 29 comes from Patrick, and I hit the big 3-0 by getting to the top of Shady Shoals. Sandy's Tree Dome was a little bit tricky as well due to the number of enemies and overall spawners, but I did eventually get through it for another spatula. Sandy swings her way to an easy spatula in Sand Mountain, and we can pick up a whole lot more by completing the three races, as well as hitting the buttons at the bottom of each slope. I'm not going to go into too much detail because they're all pretty similar. By the time we have finished the final slope, we end up at 38 spatulas, technically the halfway point of the challenge. Number 39 unlocks from the Sand Mountain Bungee Jump, which allows us to complete everything in this area of the game with the exception of the Snowman Sock, which I did try a couple of times. Upon grabbing spatula number 40 from Patrick, we head off to the Industrial Park for our second boss fight. This fight is definitely tougher than the first due to the boss's annoying goo attacks that can be a little tough to dodge, but we do clear the first two phases within a total of two attempts. The third phase is a little bit trickier, but it's a lot easier than it used to be since Patbot's back is always going to face you when he stops spinning unlike random parts of the level like it used to. We grab Spatula 41 and the Cruise Bubble just like that. We then get number 42 on top of the Chum Bucket and 43 from the Chum Bucket Wall Jump. I did try the Krusty Krab Spatula a couple times, but was not successful. I then used the Cruise Bubble and the Bubble Bowl to grab the final spatula and sock from downtown, as well as the remaining four socks from Jellyfish Fields. I'm really surprised I didn't get a couple of those previously. I guess I just kind of forgot about them. And with that, we conclude the first of two streams with 44 spatulas out of the needed 75. We begin the second stream by heading off to the Mermelair. The cowboy guys are a bit tough. This is a decent little Easter egg, I guess you could call it that. And we get our first Mermelair spatula. Next, we use Patrick to hit three switches with watermelons for spatula number 46. I spent a good amount of time on the laser spinny puzzle. I then wall jump my way to spatula 48, cross a bunch of random electric floors, and then bubble bowl and arf to death before grabbing spatula 49. We fail our first run on the rolling ballroom, and the second run goes even worse due to my own mistake, but victory and spatula 50 come on only the third attempt at this infamous spatula. After grabbing an easy 51st from shutting down the security system, we fight our second mini boss. Prawn is pretty easy to get through without taking damage. His attacks are relatively easy to avoid if you know his attack patterns. He does spawn a few hammers, but that's not really a big deal, and he's not really that hard to hit. I also went back and managed to grab the final sock in the Mermelair from dodging these electrical things, as well as a trade with Patrick. Our next destination is the Robot Loaded Rock Bottom, but thankfully we come in with the Cruise Bubble, which you're not technically supposed to do. This makes Sleepy Time robots a lot easier to kill. Very good strategy for those playing this game for the first time. I took damage from the Double Tar Bots, popped out of a teleport box at a very bad time, and then we get our first spatula from the top of the museum. 
I had way too much trouble with the first museum section. I had to reset four total times for this very simple platforming section, but I did eventually get all the way to spatula number 55 on the other end of the museum. I was slow but cautious on the upper part of the museum, sniping the monsoons out of the air or water or whatever it is, and we begin to cross the trench of advanced darkness. Fighting the sleepy times as Sandy is not the easiest thing in the world, but she does swing her way to spatula 56, and I eventually managed to finish the laser realignment puzzle and find the last painting. I retreated back to the museum to grab a couple of socks I had missed previously. We fight past multiple sleepy times and spawners to reach spatula number 58. I then grab an easy slide spatula from Mr. Krabs and sell Mrs. Puff the precious and valuable artwork for one more spatula. Unfortunately for the life of me, I could not remember how to get to this last spatula during this run, but on the plus side, I did get to trade with Patrick again. Upon arriving in Spongebob's dream with a new mustache, we collect this obnoxious spatula by jumping on top of a ball. We get a sock and spatula from the Tar Island. I killed this group of robots for what ended up being no reason. I somehow missed this jump. And once again, while trying to kill myself, I managed to land on an out of bounds platform, but we still get yet another spatula. Number 65 is easily found on Squidward's dream house. His dream is pretty much played like normal since you're very unlikely to take any damage anyway. And then we grab another fairly easy spatula. Mr. Krabs' dream is really tough under these conditions. You have to destroy every single robot and all three spawners, and unlike the original, you can't just launch cruise bubbles at all the spawners from hiding behind Squidward because they're now shielded. I did grab the sock because it's fairly easy, but gave up on the spatula after a few tries. Thankfully, we have plenty of other options, so it's not really going to set us back very far. Spatula 67 came from crossing the dreamscape, followed by number 68 in Patrick's dream, and then we make our way to the kelp forest. The first spatula here is easily found at the end of a linear pathway, and then we head to the tiki puzzle. We grab our 70th spatula by freezing the lake and running over to a cage in a short amount of time. Clearing the tiki puzzle is a lot easier than it used to be, due to the lighting being far better. The third tiki is actually easier than the second one, and we get spatula number 71 as our reward. The caves are really slow and tedious and boring and not really interesting, but it does result in a spatula for reaching the end of it, as well as another for turning in all six crystals to Barnacle Boy. The Kelp Forest Slide provided no trouble for someone with my gaming skills. I finished the slide and the time trial on just my second attempt. Suck it, Mermaid Man. I even got a bonus Fallout 76 spatula from Patrick for another trade. Time for the finale. The first half is shockingly easy. I got through it without taking a single hit on my very first attempt. Nothing to worry about there. Now we head to the true final battle inside of Spongebob. During this battle, I somehow reflected a projectile back at a chuck. This is something I have never done before and have never been able to replicate. If you guys know how to, please feel free to let me know. I expected to have a lot of problems during this fight since death sends you all the way back to the beginning because there's no checkpoints, except that's not what actually happens anymore. Apparently, this version gives you a checkpoint after each segment. Oh, and if you warp back to the start of the spatula while the enemies respawn, the platforms are already there and the fuses are already destroyed. They nerfed the hell out of this version of the game. So to whoever it was on IGN or whatever website gave this game a 2 out of 10 for being too punishing, you're an idiot. Anyway, we hit Plankton three more times, strike the final three fuses, and I technically beat SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated without taking any damage. Overall, this run actually wasn't as difficult as I expected it to be. There are certainly some tough parts of it, but I did make it harder on myself by not allowing myself to trade with Mr. Krabs. That would have gotten me a lot of easy spatulas. There isn't really a perfect way to conduct this challenge, at least on console, but I think the methods I undertook were sufficient enough. This game is a lot of fun. I really, really encourage longtime fans to consider trying to make their own challenges for this game, and at least picking the game up and having some fun with it. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, favorite, share, and comment. Subscribe and ring that bell if you haven't already, and I will see you guys for the next challenge run.